Welcome! You're viewing the video version of the Santu Pearls Stock Market Commentary featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart for July 3rd, 2016. Market breadth. With this past week's market advance, our bull bear point and figure ratio rose to 1.67 from 0.68 last week rising back into bullish territory. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns decreased 5% to 2,928. The count of bearish stocks decreased 40%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns increased 46%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now one week in bullish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the open office calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking Membership, clicking Register, and following the prompts. To receive the weekly email version of the Santu Pearl Stock Market Commentary free of charge, Simply enter your email address in the space provided. The well-known market breadth indicator, the NASDAQ McClellan Summation Index, fell two points for the seventh decline in 20 weeks. At a positive 91.24 points, it continues below all six highs above plus 100 and continues above all six bottoms below minus 100 in the last three years. Volume Analysis In this week's volume analysis, the NASDAQ Composite Index ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode, with average daily volume lower than the prior week. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ had two accumulation days and one distribution day. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week, the NASDAQ ended in distribution mode on higher average daily volume. Momentum. In a Woody's downtrend, at Friday 624 close, the CCI 20 daily presented a zero-line reject short entry signal. At Wednesday 629 close, it rose above minus 100 to signal exit from the trade. The result was a loss of 129.32 points on the NASDAQ composite, or $2.89 per share of QQQ. In Woody's CCI trading system, Six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's uptrend nine weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's downtrend one week ago. The CCI 20 weekly fell slightly to minus 7.81 from a positive 7.60 last week still within the plus or minus 50 range if it rises this week. Industry rotation, the last two weeks. All of the top five industries are positive and all of the bottom five are negative. Summary, precious metals and REITs on top. Banking and brokers on the bottom. Tech, mixed. Bullish, REITs continues in the top five. Networkers has left the bottom five. Bearish, KBW Bank, and Brokers continue in the bottom five. Gold and Silver continues in and now leads the top five. Disk Drives has left the top five and entered the bottom five. Focus this week from www.zerohedge.com. We look at two blogs on global economic predictions, one short-term, one long-term. Excerpts follow. 
First, the simpler short term. Morgan Stanley explains one big reason why central planners can't generate any inflation. As China continues to weaken the yuan, it's important to note the impact that it has on the inflation expectations of other economies, namely the U.S., Japan, and Europe. As central planners aggressively try to boost inflation and in the meantime have created a stunning $11.7 trillion in negative yielding debt, China could be hindering that effort quite a bit. As Morgan Stanley points out, CNY has weakened over the last year or so versus the euro, yen, and dollar and is helping to explain the continued undershoot of inflation in Japan and Europe, and we would add in the U.S. In summary, while Kyle Bass has the ultimate long-term endgame pegged, in the short term, China will continue to systematically export deflation around the world and continue to be a significant thorn in the side of central planners everywhere who are trying desperately to generate any type of meaningful inflation and salvage whatever is left of their credibility. Next, Kyle Bass's previously referenced long-term end game, Kyle Bass shares the stunning thing a central banker once told him. Bass said the country's, that is China's, $3 trillion corporate bond market is freezing up amid rising defaults and canceled debt sales. We're starting to see the beginning of the Chinese machine literally break down. They're going to do everything the U.S. did in our crisis, said Bass, who has gone public with his China views since at least October. Every single thing the Chinese central bank and central planners have to do is currency negative for them. He added that the Chinese government wants a devaluation, but they just want to do it on their terms. Grant, they're going to have to do it to recap the banks. There's going to be a reason for them to do it, not a choice. Bass, it's going to happen. In the 2008 USA housing bubble burst, Our asset liability mismatches were 2.5% of our system, and you know what they did. So their excesses are already, they're already so far ahead of the world's excesses in prior crises that we're facing the largest macro imbalance in world history. And to this day, I can't figure out why people don't see it for what it is. On gold... With the entire world going to negative rates, then on a relative basis, it's probably one of the better currencies to own. I buy that wholeheartedly. And seeing which way the central banks are going, you're going to have to own something. On stocks, if China has the comeuppance we think they're going to have soon, then that's not going to be an equity-positive environment. It's purely confidence now. There's nothing left but confidence in these guys that they can do this. We're already crossing the Rubicon of the helicopter money. Kyle, look, I had a fascinating out-of-body experience meeting with one of the world's top central bankers in a private meeting about three years ago. And he said, you know, Kyle, Quantitative easing only works when you're the only country doing it. So we're all trying. We're attempting through our Treasury and our Fed to get the rest of the world to not devalue against us while we quietly attempt to devalue ourselves against them. And it's all this. It is the race to the bottom. It is the beggar thy neighbor policies that we all talk about, and I believe that there is no way out. Thank you for tuning in for this week's Santu Pearls Stock Market Commentary. 
featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart compiled by Donald Pearl, www.s2pmarketsignal.com. Hoping that you are enjoying a peaceful and pleasant holiday weekend, that you are looking forward to a very festive Independence Day tomorrow, that you are also looking forward to a prosperous and productive week coming up, and wishing you true success.